What's going on guys? Hey Paul is back for the next part of this tutorial and in this part we are going to talk about getting him to investigate sounds. Now I did actually go through the long process of figuring it out on camera however that video ended up being A too long and B corrupted. So instead of doing it again and wasting a bunch of time, your time as well, uh, I've decided just to do this uh, summary style, meaning I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you what I did and hopefully do my best to explain how I've done it. So very first thing I want to do is I want to demo it. So I just as a quick preface, I have the ability now to throw a ball and wherever the ball lands, he's going to go and sniff at it. Okay, so let's go here and I hit the T key to do that. Why did I turn that way? So I'm going to throw that. It's going to wireframe view. And you can see that he goes over there and he's like, hey, what was that? Did you hear that? All right. And then he goes back to wandering. So let's get him to come over here. See, now he's coming over here. I don't want him to see me yet because at any moment that he sees me, it will overwrite everything and he will come for the charge. Okay. So he tried to get there and he couldn't actually make it there, but he does try to correct himself. Now, while he's investigating, let's throw another one. While he's investigating, I cannot interrupt him. Okay, I can't get him to come and do anything else. And that right now is by design. Okay, it isn't until he starts moving around again by himself that I can give him a new target. See, like right now I throw a whole bunch behind him and he never cares about them. Okay, I can change that. And I'll show you guys how to change that so that he will actually, you can bounce him back and forth if you wanted to. See, once he goes back about, um, you know, wandering around, I can actually get him to, <coughs> excuse me, get him to uh, change, change directions. Now, if at any moment he sees me, even while he's investigating, so let's get him to investigate. So he's over there. If he sees me, it will piss him off immediately. Okay? So he is now officially mad at me. And he was not going to leave me alone until I get out of his sight for about 30 seconds. So it's going to take me a long time to lose his ass. So let's go through it really quick and I'll show you guys what I did. So first off, um, when I hit the T key here, I spawned this first person projectile. Okay? So I just get my cameras, um, I just do it straight from the camera. Right, and and I set myself as the uh, instigator, and that is actually an important part of it. The reason is, is because here is the projectile. On the construction script, we told it to ignore actor when moving, and we're ignoring the instigator. So we feed it the instigator, which is us, just ourself, and then we ignore it on construction. Okay, when it's this does run when an actor is spawned, and basically, on a bounce here, we do once. We cast a first person character, okay, and we're casting our instigator, and we run this custom event here, which is called generate noise. So if I come over here and I double click that, I'm now on the first person character, I generate noise and I make noise which the target of is pawn noise emitter. Now that is an actual component that you need to add. You can see it right here, pawn noise emitter, okay, it tracks noise event data. Uh, used by sensing components, okay? So it is a component that you need to ha uh, have, and then you can come out here, and then you can say, make noise, okay? Just like that, and that's all I did. And it does have some inputs, such as who made the noise, okay? Is the actual actor who made the noise? How loud was the noise? It should be from zero to one. And where was the position of the noise? So what we do is the first person projectile gets its own actor location on when it bounces, remember as soon as it bounces here we do once, we get our location and we send the noise so we're saying that the instigator for the noise was the rock uh, it has a volume of one, the loudest that it can get and the location is set from where where is it right now so we're just getting an actor location of self Okay. then we run generate noise and what we do is we say make noise right here and then the parasite character because it has a pawn sensing component when you click that you actually have over here on see pawn and on hear noise so you can always click these green things here and say okay you know if you don't have it already this will be a plus sign alright and so what happens is 
these are inconsequential right now. They're just local copies of who was the, where was it, and uh, who made the sound. And I really don't care about the volume, to be honest with you, at this point. So what I do is when he hears a noise, I'm going to write to his blackboard what that value is for the location of the noise. Okay? So on his blackboard, I did add a new key entry, sound location set to type vector, because we want him to go to a location, and a location needs to be a vector. Okay? So the parasite character gets his blackboard from his controller. Okay? The controller is stored uh, in the beginning here, um, and it is type uh, AI controller, and we just set that value. Okay? So in the behavior tree, what we have is a decorator here that's looking for sound location being set. And when it is set, we abort the lower priority, meaning the wandering. Okay? And so we're going to, as soon as we get a uh, location set, we're going to come in here and we're going to start doing this code. So here is the code for him actually doing the investigating of the sound. And what we do is, let's ignore this for a second, uh, essentially I just store this uh, right off the bat because I don't want to keep dragging this everywhere, everywhere. You can see where I'm using it in a, in a few places, uh, really only three, but I really, I just don't want to have a bunch of lines everywhere. So I just store it as a variable. And then I run a custom event called move to. Now all it does is do AI move to, and that requires a pawn input. So I gave this an input here of the controlled pawn and the type is set to pawn and I feed that from here. Okay, So it runs this <coughs> and what we're using is destination and not actor. We could have used actor if we wanted to but I want to get the balls to just yeah, I don't want them to be like spread around all over the place. I want them to disappear after a couple of seconds. So we use location. All right. So what we do is we get sound location key. This is a Blackboard key, and it is set to public so that it can be. I can determine which um, Blackboard entry is associated with this, and we just get the value as a vector and we tell it to go there. Now, should it succeed, we get success immediately fired, which will take it on success will go to the very next item in the sequence which will be a wait of five seconds and then after that that will that will fire a success and this will go to clear sound location and I'll show you guys that in a second so if it fails meaning he either got stuck the ball was on something that he cannot nav to it fell off the nav mesh it landed you know somewhere far away or something he just simply cannot get to it what I do is to get him to correct himself and not get stuck in some kind of infinite loop I tell him to try again, move to, okay? If I double click that, it takes me here. If I double click that, it takes me here, okay? So we call it again, except now what we do is we start logging how many attempts we've, we've um, executed to actually get there. So each time it fails, we increment attempts by one, then we check if the attempts got over a threshold, and in this case I'm just doing five. If it did, we want him to give up. Like, hey, I tried five times to get to this thing, it ain't happening, just let me go, let me go back to wandering, okay? So the way to do that is we clear the location key, okay, because as soon as that happens, this will become not set, and it won't want to run this anymore, okay? So that's why we do that. So we clear the key, and we don't want to set the value as 000, because a location of 000 is still a perfectly valid location. It, the, the, the value is still set, it's just set to 0. So what we do is we clear it, and then the, then the key actually becomes, or the value here, this, this, this um, entry here, becomes invalid. It doesn't get set to 000, because that's still valid. So we need to invalidate it, and the way to do that is to clear it. Okay, and then again we have already given up at this point, right? And so we reset our attempts so that the next time he does it again, you know, through the next loop, um, we can start over. And then we finish execute with a fail. And we do a fail because a fail will force him instantaneously out of this sequence, and it will send us back up to the selector. And at this point, it'll go here. Okay, it'll go to the next one. All right. Now, if he succeeds, we have again just a success which takes him out of this task, but puts, keeps him in the sequence, so it runs the next item in the sequence. So he'll wait five seconds, that will succeed, it will come back up here, and it will come down again, and we clear sound location, 
and this is all this does. We get sound location key, we clear the value, and then we succeed. Okay? And the reason that I do succeed on here, it could actually be success. It wouldn't it wouldn't change anything. Because what it'll do is it'll fire this again to run a check. And at this point, because we've cleared it, this will not be true anymore, and he will in fact move on. Okay? And that's it. So and again, we goes to wandering. If he sees me at any point, this will abort anything that's going on below it, and he will chase me through thick and thin. He, he will not let me go until this, what I already covered, um, how to get him to, to determine whether or not he can still see you. And again, I do have that set to uh, run every, either from 10 to 30 seconds, because the interval is, is 20, and it has a deviation of 10, so it can either be 10 below or 10 above. So it's 10 to 30 seconds. And that's it. So let's just demo it again. All right, so I throw one. He goes over there. And again, if I throw more, he does not change his mind. He's still fixated on that one. He cannot change his mind right now. Because what's happening is it's set, but it's already been set. So it's not going to do anything. If I want him to chase every ball that I throw, I need to actually go on value change, abort both. Okay, so now if the value changes, meaning um, it, say the sound location was at 50, 0, 0, or something like that, 50 in the X, then I change it to now 80 in the X, right? The value will change and it's going to abort this and it's going to come up and it's going to hit back here, but it's also still going to be set. So it's actually going to come back into here and run it again, if that makes sense, hopefully. So now I can send them over there. I can send them over here. I can send them over there. I can make him go back over there. Oh, he saw me. So if he sees me, it's too late. Game over. So let's send him over there. Oh, well, he didn't actually hear that. So we'll send him here. And then we'll send him back. See, he goes back. And then we'll send him here. He comes forward. Then we'll send him over there. He comes over here. And then we'll send him over here. And he goes, he changes his mind. And I can say, hey, change your mind again. Well, in that one, he's, he's in the middle of a fail. And also, you got to remember, he's only got a certain amount of radius that he can hear from. Okay, so I can actually make him stop mid-stride and change his mind because now it, it is aborting immediately as soon as the value changes. Okay, so it's very instantaneous, which means that I can kind of spaz him out a little bit. He's going to go to the very last one. Right now it's too far away from him, so we can, we can start leading him over here, trying to stay out of his view. that way. Okay, you can go send him over there. He'll go to the very last one that landed. Okay. He'll go there. He'll go there. If I turn him this way, he's on my ass. So it depends on how you want to do it. Uh, if you want him to be able to react to anything and everything as long as you, you know, as soon as it happens, you do need to make sure that your um, you want to do it like this, on value change, abort both. That way it aborts itself, but again, because the key is set, it will come back in and fire it again. We just need to get it to run out and back through, and that's how we do it. So hopefully that is enough to get you guys going on doing sound stuff, and this is HitPause signing off, and thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about this in particular, let me know in this video, and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Thanks for watching.